here, Charlie McMahon, and I'm doing a comparison between the Italian job original, which was made in 1969, and the remake, which was made in 2003. Um, the original uh, the story on a whole, it, Charlie's just left prison, Charlie Croker. Um, one of his friends has attempted to do a high-risk job in Italy, just right under the nose of the Mafia. Um, he doesn't exactly do well, so he has to continue the job, uh, Charlie does, um, with three Mini Coopers, a uh, few Jaguars, and a bus to carry out the heist. Um, he plans to bring the whole of Torino, which is in Italy, to a halt in order to steal $4 million worth of gold coming in from China. In the remake, it's pretty similar, um, a team led again by Charlie Croker, at this time with John Bridger. Um, they're doing one last job to do a $35 million heist in gold bars from a highly secured safe in Venice. After succeeding in the heist, uh, one of the team members, Steve, who gets very greedy and jealous, he plans to take the gold for himself and kill the rest of his team. Um, he does do that, little does he know, well he flees to LA, but little does he know that the team have survived his attempts in killing them. Um, both the films were considered action and adventure. Um, the original was directed by Peter Collinson, who also did Earthling and Tomorrow Never Come. Uh, the remake, however, was directed by Felix Gary Gray. He only did 17 titles, one of which was Law Abiding Citizen, which is very popular. Um, he won a Film Life Movie Award for Best Director at the 2004 American Black Film Festival. This is just a budget for Alfie um, because I couldn't find a budget for the original Italian job, so I just bought, I just got information on a film near that time, which was also a Michael Caine film. Um, the budget for Alfie was $800,000. Um, it made a box office of $8.5 million and a gross profit of just over $7.5 million. The gross margin was 90.5% and the markup was 962.5. Um, the figures for the remake are the budget was $60 million. Uh, the box office was just over 175 million. Um, the gross profit was 116 million. The gross margin was nearly 66 percent. The market was 193.4. Uh, in the opening weekend of the release, the film grossed 19 and a half million dollars. Uh, Paramount re-released the film on August 29th, and by the time it's it closed in November. Uh, film had grossed $106 million in the United States and Canada and just under $70 million overseas which makes a total of $176 million. Uh, it was the highest grossing film produced by Paramount in 2003. Uh, technologies of production. Uh, the original 1969 film was shot with 35mm Panavision cameras uh, with an aspect ratio of 2.35 to 1 um, with an Eastman colour type. The remake used the same cameras as the original but with different colour settings as you can probably tell if you've watched both. One's probably a bit more clearer than the other. Um, distribution exhibition. The original was released on 2nd of June 1969 in the UK and it was released three months later in the US. Uh, the most positive reviews focus on the car chase um, and the acting of both Michael Caine and Noel Coward, um, as well as Peter Collinson's directing. Um, it's considered highly memorable of 1960s, well, highly evocative of 1960s London and the era in Britain as a whole. Although it received a Golden Globe nomination for Best English Language Foreign Film, the film is not considered a success in the States. 
Um, it did get some negative views or, uh, reviews also, um, focused on what is perceived as the car chase being predictable and having a lack of real emotion. Uh, some of the trends at the time in the 1960s, um, the most obvious trends that decade are action and adventure, obviously. Uh, there's many more like historical drama, psychological horror, and comedy. Um, there's many subgenres as well, such as spy films, sword and scandal, and spaghetti westerns, and they're all at their peak during this decade. Um, same thing for 2000, some of the trends. Uh, there were loads during this decade, obviously, because technology was getting uh, a, lot a lot more advanced, so they can explore many things. This um, one of the um, main trends that uh, most films began to start with the like Pirates of the Caribbean or the Pirates of the Caribbean, The Lord of the Rings, and The Incredibles, and many more. Um, obviously, because during this decade, uh, I believe the DVD format was released. Obviously, people want to get their hands on a new format, uh, which would increase sales and generate quite a lot of money. Obviously, up to this day, it's usually Blu-ray, but you can still get them on DVDs. Um, some of the cast, uh, uh, there's only two characters which are like remain the same in both the remake and the original, uh, which was Charlie Croker and Mr. Bridger. In the 1969 original, it was Michael Caine who played Charlie Croker, whereas in the remake, it was Mark Wahlberg. Uh, Donald Sutherland played Mr. Bridger in. No, Noel Cowell played Mr. Bridger in the 1969 original, and Donald Sutherland played him in the 2003 remake. Uh, there's not many characters that were the same, obviously, um, but they played a very similar role in the film. Um, Benny Hill, he was. He played Professor Simon Peach, uh, Ralph Malone in, he was called Al Tabani, and Tony Beck who played Freddy uh, in the original film. Um, in the remake cover, Jason Statham uh, was called Handsome Rob, and Seth Green played Lil, and Moss Def played Left Ear, Evan Norton played Steve. Uh, just a stark comparison from the main characters. Um, we'll start off with Michael Caine. His career began at the age of 20 when he became a, an assistant stage manager. Um, he made his breakthrough in the 1960s, starring roles in many British films uh, like Zulu, The Inquest File, Alfie, and The Italian Job, obviously, and Battle of Britain. Um, He's been Oscar nominated six times, winning his first Academy Award for the 1986 film Hannah and Her Sisters, and his second in the 1999 Four Cider House Rules, uh, in both cases as a supporting actor. Uh, Wahlberg dropped, Mark Wahlberg dropped the marky mark for Monica at, began, and began an acting career, making his debut in the 1993 TV movie The Substitute. Um, he earned many positive reviews after successful movies like Boogie Nights, um, he played Dirk Diggler in that, uh, The Three Kings, The Perfect Storm, The Italian Job, and The Famous Four Brothers. Uh, moving on to a comparison between both people who played Mr. Bridger, we'll start with Donald Sutherland. Um, his teenage years were spent in Nova Scotia. Um, and he got his first part-time job at the age of 14 as a news correspondent. Uh, in the early to mid-1960s, he began to gain small parts in British films and TV. In 2002, he won a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor in a series, a mini-series or television film in a program called Path to War. Uh, moving on to Noel Coward. Um, his first professional job was in January 1911 as Prince Muscle in the children's play The Goldfish. 
1920, at the age of 20, at the age of 20, um, he starred in his own play, the light comedy, I'll Leave It To You. Um, then in 1955, uh, he acted at Las Vegas, recorded live for the gramophone, and released as Noel Carroll at Las Vegas was so successful, and it was very successful that the CBS engaged him to write and direct a series of three 90-minute television specials for the 1955-66 season. A um, few uh, social, political and regulatory factors. Um, the original is a product of its time because it's for the era that Britain was in, it suited the film, sort of complemented that very well. Um, the cars, especially the Mini Coopers, um, they also show a representation of the swinging era as they are featuring one of the greatest movie car chases ever filmed. Um, comedy was approaching a peak at its time and was well incorporated into the film. Uh, a few differences between the films that you may or may not notice if you've watched them. Um, the original is set in Italy and Part of the remake is set in Italy, but mostly in LA. Um, in the original, I believe Charlie Brooke has a more aggressive personality, in the, whereas in the original, he he's a bit more calmer and you know can be violent. Um, but definitely, he's more aggressive in the original because he's, you can see he's very impatient. Um, in the original, the team steal from the mafia, whereas in the remake, they steal from a betraying team member. Um, the original uh, ending was uh, a cliffhanger ending, whereas the remake was a more conventional sort of good guy gets to go and bad guy dies sort of thing. Um, in the remake, the minis used were upgraded from the classics seen newer models as the years have gone. Um, some of the team members in the remake have different names to the original, which you may have heard in the cast section, uh, but they all have similar roles. Um, Oakhurst produced the um, original and Paramount distributed it, whereas in the remake it was both produced and distributed by Paramount. Um, the producer of the original was Stanley Baker, whereas in the remake it was Donald DeLine. There are many rumours of the so-called Brazilian Job, which was meant to be a sequel from the Italian Job, obviously, um, but I'm not sure if this has yet been confirmed. Uh, just a quick overview of both films. Um, in my opinion, the remake has one of the best stories the film has to offer. Compared to the original, it revolves more around family and friends and sticking together and looking out for each other and that sort of thing. Um, whereas the original has more of a sense of, you know, just getting the job done sort of thing. Um, the original is definitely more comedy incorporated, um, whereas the remake has a more serious atmosphere. Um, the cast of the original are very get up and go, as so in the remake, but I think in the remake has a more intimidating and stronger cast. Uh, for both films I gave four stars because I, I've watched both, I really like both, I like the stories in both, I like the cast in both. And just a few trivial facts, um, the ending was changed uh, to leave open the possibility of a sequel in the original version. Um, again, in the original version, the roof-to-roof -roof jump was filmed on top of the Fiat factory. And final, fa uh, final fact in the original, when filming the bus hanging over the cliff, the camera helicopter downdraft started to tip the bus over. Obviously, that was unsafe. Uh, just another three facts about the remake. Uh, while the thieves were spying on Steve, 
the one who stole from them in his home. Um, Michael Caine is seen on a lot, his large television screen in a clip from Alfie. Um, in the subways of America, you're not allowed to have petrol-powered cars driving around, so they used two electric-powered Mini Coopers and one Mini Cooper S, obviously because of the gasoline in the uh, underground. Um, a final fact, uh, the Venice Authority allowed the crew to go over the speed limit in the for the boat chase, uh, you know, in order to complete the sequence. Uh, thank you for watching. Good man.